this video we will examine feminism and try to understand its implications on society and most of all how it leads to transgenderism. To have an intellectual argument we should define feminism. Wikipedia says feminism is a range of political movements, ideologies and social movements that share a common goal to define, establish and achieve equal political, economic, personal and social rights for women. This includes seeking to establish equal opportunities for women in education and employment. Feminists typically advocate or support rights and equality of women. If I understand correctly, feminism is about equality, that women deserve equal opportunities to men. I get it, it's about equality. But then let me ask you this, why not simply call yourself a supporter of egalitarian doctrine, socialist or communist? But is feminism truly about equality of opportunity, or is it simply just about equality of outcome? From what I can see, it's not about equality, but it's about superiority, privilege and special treatment. If not, explain me this, why do you need a distinct movement and a special ideology for a certain group of people if all people are equal and should not be viewed in terms of their race, gender or religion, then why do you need a special policies and laws introduced? Because in the Western world we have laws and institutions that battle discrimination. One might even say that some of these laws and institutions speak against freedom of speech and freedom of association. But let's stop here. Maybe I am overanalyzing this, and maybe feminism is truly about the equality of opportunity. Yes, let's assume that. In that case, I don't see any huge problem with the idea itself. I don't know if it should be done, but it can be done. Let's take a look at, in my opinion, one of the best feminist arguments, the wage gap. August 18 this year. Gender pay gap. Female bosses earn 35% less than male colleagues. Obviously, there's a huge fucking problem here even today. People who do the same job with the same quality and effort deserve the same fucking pay. The wage gap is a statistical indicator often used as an index of the status of women's earnings relative to men's. By all means, the gender pay gap is real. Women earn only 79% of men's average hourly wages. Who could favor that? That is outrageous. This is sexism at its purest form. But maybe there is some different explanation. Maybe the wage gap is due to a variety of causes, such as differences in education choices, differences in preferred job and industry, differences in the type of positions held by men and women, differences in the type of jobs men typically go to into opposed to women and that is especially with a highly paid high risk jobs differences in amount of work experience differences in the length of work week and breaks in employment for example according to european commission direct discrimination only explains a small part of gender wage differences and even in this case it is being battled because it is illegal to do that and yes, you could claim that in a private sector, women might not be hired on the basis that they might get pregnant because that could make inconvenience for the employer. That would just prove that capitalist thinking is alienated from the interests of society as a whole because society is interested in reproduction, at least society that is not suicidal. And this argument at best can only be considered as a sloppy critique of capitalism as a socio-economic system. Of course not all men hate women, but culture hates women, and men who grow up in a sexist culture have a tendency to do and say sexist things, sometimes without meaning to. We aren't judging you for who you are, but that doesn't mean we're not asking you to change your behaviour. What you feel about women in your heart is actually of less immediate importance than how you treat them on a daily basis. You can be the gentlest, sweetest man in the world and still benefit from sexism and still hesitate to speak up when you see women hurt and discriminated against. And that is how oppression works. With this being said, feminists will not stop here. They will go further and claim that there is sexism deep in our culture and that difference in education choices and difference in preferred jobs comes from sexist structure of our culture. Gender roles and traditions shape women's and men's roles in society. Yes. But doesn't our culture base its roots in our biology? Men and women are biologically different. That is an observable truth. When men go out to chop wood and women stay at home to bake pancakes, how is that discrimination? I will go even as far to claim that there was no sexism in the Western culture in the past. Gender roles is not sexism, and gender roles are based in our biology. You can view gender roles as a division of labor. Society works just like any workplace. Some people will be drivers, some accountants, and others will be salesmen. 
That is how we function as a society. Being obliged and to have duty to go to war is privilege or is it discrimination? Or is it simply rational that men have to go to war and women have to stay at home? Society can afford to lose most of its men and still function. But if society lost most of its women, it would collapse because it would not be able to reproduce itself. This forms a hierarchy. Men sacrifice themselves for their wives and children. Women sacrifice themselves for their children. And here so-called patriarchy is born. In medieval Europe, military and politics were as one. Military elite and political elite was the same. I will repeat again. Gender roles is not sexism. But will feminists stop here? So really, I mean, what, what is gender? It doesn't exist. That's really what the conclusion I have come to is that it really doesn't exist. No, they will claim that none of this matters because gender is a social construct and the person's gender can be changed. Yes, it is a very rational conclusion. Gender is a social construct. The idea of gender comes from culture. The individual members of each type are similarly differentiated amongst themselves. No two individuals are ever precisely alike. But culture is made by society, therefore it is a social construct itself, and society is a biological construct. And here we are trapped again. Biology is a natural science concerned with the study of life and living organisms, and like all sciences, it is made by society, therefore it is a social construct. That means all the understanding gained and classification presented by biology is a social construct. And I can't give a logical counter-argument to that. So that means feminism and transgenderism should be encouraged. But how far are we willing to go with this? Because maturity is also a social construct. And I think you can see where it can go from there if implemented on society. Normality is a social construct. Some will say that this can't be because we have laws. And I will say again, laws are a social construct. Every idea we have and every action we take is a social construct because it is made by members of society or society as a whole. How far are you willing to go? What is the end game? Mind games like these are good for your brain power, but we still have to function as a society. These schools of thought are a product of self-centered rationalism. They do not cognize outside their own constructed worlds, ignoring actual everyday life experience. It applies criticism to its own artificial world until it exhausts itself in meaninglessness. Women's role in society can be changed, and it is changing, but this forced emancipation has to stop.